Ronnie, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. I'm good, thanks. Another world championship? You up for it? Yeah, like I just, yeah, I'm just happy to be here, enjoying it. Good fun. I'm here no matter what for the 17, 18 days. I enjoy doing my work uh, with Eurosport, so if the wheels fall off in the snooker, I've also, I can turn it into training camp, which I can get my gym, my running done, my gym, all that sort of stuff, eat good food and still be on site and still watch the snooker and still be around it, you know. At my age, you sort of like just want to enjoy life, you know. I'd, lo I'd love to win it, I'd love to go deep in the tournament, but if I don't, you know, there's always, uh, there's always other options, you know, but, uh, but I'll still be here. And how is it running? It's all right, you know, for, for an old geezer like me that's 46, which isn't really old in you're long distance. You're not that old. Yeah, I know, but I'm not that good. So as you get older and you're not that good, it starts to sort of like, you know, get worse, if you know what I mean. Whereas if you're a class runner at 46, if you're not that good, but you was class in your day, you can still like churn it out. So I have to work hard at it, but I enjoy it. I, I love when I have a good run and, you know, good periods of training well. So really that's my passion. Um, and because of COVID, it got me back into running because I couldn't, couldn't go to any gym. So yeah, that's something bad, something good's kind of come out of it, I suppose. There's some cracking places to run around here as well, isn't there? Mm, yeah, the, you've got the peak, peaks here. So I uh, sometimes, you know, start off in Sheffield and end up in the Peak District. And then other times I take a, a, a 10, 15 minute drive and we go and find one of them, uh, the peaks there and we run up that. So yeah, no, it's, it's great, you know. So any day off I'll get off, I'll, I'll definitely be exploring the Peak District a bit more. I mean, you've been coming to Sheffield for a long time now, haven't you? Yeah, I started coming here. I can't even remember, to be honest, in 1992, 1993 maybe? 93 was your first 93 appearance, was my yeah. first one, so I don't know, what year were now? 22, uh, it was nearly 29 years, so 29 consecutive years here at Crucible, which is great, you know, I've been coming here every year, and it gets better and better, I think, as you get a bit more into your latter stages of your career, you kind of like learn to just appreciate just uh, what a good life it, you, you got, you know? You say you're 46 years of age, but you're 46 years of age and you're world number one again. Yeah, I don't know that happened really. Because um, you're playing well. I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't say I was playing great. You know, I haven't really won many tournaments, and I won the world a couple of years ago. Managed to nick, nick a tournament this year, but out of 30 tournaments, I've got two wins. Whereas before, out of 10 tournaments, I was getting five wins. You know, so the strike rate is nowhere near as like what it used to. But like I say, I'm not. I'm not so. I, I can't be driven by that anymore and that can't be the reasons why I do or I don't play you know I just have to have fun enjoy it if I got to number one great um, yeah it just sort of probably goes back to that anal analogy I said about a, a class runner you know when they're class in their day even when they're past their kind of best they're still decent you know and I suppose that's what's happened to me you know I was pretty pretty very good in my day but and even though I'm not in my A day, I'm still handful for most people, especially over the distance. You know, like to be a high ranked player, it's, it's it's not just one tournament. It's over. You know, it's measured on consistency, I suppose. But you must be rocking up here, thinking you can win it again. I don't think I've never thought that. Even when I played, you know, I, I, get, I get a feeling during the tournament that it, where we're going with it. But I never know until that first round's out of the way. You get to the second round, if you can get through that, and you get. I think once you get to the quarters. You kind of um, you have an idea of whether this could be your tournament or not, you know. And uh, I know where my game needs to be emotionally, physically, technically. And if you know, if if they don't all have to be ten out of ten, but if three of them are eight out of ten and one of them six out of ten, I've got a chance, you know. So I just kind of just, but I'll know that if I'm still in the tournament by round end of round two, round three, you kind of get a, you get an idea of how, how it'll probably pan out, you know. So carry on the running analogies, it's a marathon here, isn't it? Yeah. It is a marathon, but in some ways, as the tournament goes on, you just learn to just switch off and just go through the motions. And, you know, you, you're not, you don't look for the finish line. You just keep just putting one foot in front of the other, one frame in front of the other. And, you know, when I look back at the tournaments that I've won here, most of them, I've won, won pretty easy, you know. Like, you know, and I look back at it, I think, well, what, what was I really worrying about? You know, I won the final by 10 frames. Probably never in danger. Semi won that by eight frames. It was really nothing to worry about quarters, won that by eight, five or six frames, was never in danger, second round won that with ten frames to spare, really had nothing to worry about there and won the first round 10-1, so no one actually gets close to you, so I think it's just more like what it means to you as a player, I think you just think I just want to win this tournament, so if you can put that out of your head and just play, then it should be alright, you know. What would a seventh world title mean? Uh, I don't know, I don't, I, I just... I think for everyone around me, they'd be excited for me. Um, but I, I just, I kind of switched off quite a long time ago about where, how I want to 
um, approach my sport, how I want to, you know, just how, how, wh where I want it in my life, you know, and for me to, to, to continue playing and enjoying playing, which is the key for me, um, above anything else, is that I need to just not worry about winning and losing. I just, and whereas before I thought there was quite a few tournaments, I'm now, there's not enough. It's like, I don't want to go home. Can we just have some more tournaments, please? Really? Yeah, yeah, because I've got myself set up in such a way now where everything's all been taken care of off the table. And I'm like, I've got all the time in the world. And I'm like, I can really just play now just because I want to play. And whether I win or lose, really don't matter. So I'm like, whereas before I was like, there's a lot of tournaments. I'm like, can we have some more tournaments? It's like, I don't like the thought that this is the end of the season. I just wish we were just... If I could play in Q school, I probably would. That's the truth, yeah, because I just just have fun with it. Do you realise you're still box office? Uh, I don't, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult one to sort of, like, I wouldn't want to be, uh, you know, not for me to say, um, you know, I, I do look back on some of my previous stuff, because I think you, you do as, you know, if you're looking to develop as a player or see where you, what you was doing good then compared to now, you do look back over old stuff. And I must admit, when I watch some of my stuff, I just think, wow, oh, that's... I didn't really think I looked, I was that confident, you know, I'm actually look quite confident, I look quite like I know what I'm doing out there, I look like, you know, I'm, and that was quite a nice break, and oh, that was a good safety shot, I always thought I was a bit of an amateurish at safety, and my long pot, and I always doubted my long pot, and I'm sinking a few in, and I'm playing, my break building's really good, and I just think, yeah, actually, like, it's good to, to look over that, and, because when you're out there doing it, it's really hard to judge yourself or see where you're at. So sometimes it's good to look back on it. And I, and I do actually look back at it and think, you know, I'm all right. You know, I've done all right. You know, I look pretty good out there. I'm, you know, um, yeah, yeah. I can. I'm not surprised by the achievements that I've got in the game by watching the way I play the game. You know. And 29 years on, you're still up for it, aren't you? Yeah, always up for it. I'll always be a competitor. You know, I can't, I can't ever get that out of me. And I'm just saying to. Uh, Steve Dawson today because we was coming up on the train together I said actually with the way I am now is where I've kind of got it in such a good way that I'm just playing because I want to play you know everything else is kind of being looked after and it allows me to just switch off I said if I could have been like that 25 years ago I'd have probably done even better because I think I was trying too hard I wanted it too bad I think you can want it too bad sometimes and now I, I want it just about the right amount I think I can deal with the losses and, and and take the wins and accept them for what they are and move on quicker and not dwell on them so I think you know um, I'd advise any snooker player to to try and enjoy it a bit more, you know, and not, and not put so much pressure on himself and try and not want it too bad because it will come to you if you're good enough, you know. So final question then, what you've just said, do you sometimes wake up and think, I should have won more World Championships? Yeah, definitely. If I could have my career over again, I would have won more tournaments without a doubt. But, you know, at the time you just do what you thought was best, um, you know, but, you know, I tried to develop as a player, I tried to develop in many different ways. It didn't happen overnight. It took me a bit longer. I always said I probably lost about seven, eight years of my career, nine years of my career, really, where I've had things going on off the table, um, you know, n not making excuses, that's just how it was, you know, uh, and, you know, yeah, I probably lost ten years where I'd, I didn't apply myself, or I couldn't apply myself, or wasn't in the right place to apply myself, but I kept playing, um, so yeah, I, I would have probably done better, but I'm here, I've survived it, I've come through it, and I look back at it and I think... I'm all right, mate. You know, it's, it's made me the person I am. You know, I'm a strong character. I can come through stuff, and you know, nothing phases me. Nothing. I'm, I'm not worried about anything. Any obstacle you put in front of me, I just know I'm gonna. I'm not even gonna go around it. I'm going through it. You know, so I, I, I've got. I think it gives you a much more stronger character when you haven't had it so easy. So you know, I, I take them as blessings in many ways. Well, lovely seeing you, and the best of luck. Thank you. Cheers, Mark.